Hello, my name is Jim Park. Today we're going to go over cell counting as a part of the video series covering four key components of tissue culturing. Cell counting is critical to various workflow steps during tissue culturing and is often coupled with the variability measures by using True from Blue. While there are a number of different cell counting technologies out there, we'll focus on the most commonly used counting method, which is the use of hemocytometer. Simply put, it is a glass chamber with precisely defined grid geometry and depth. Cell solutions are usually mixed one-to-one -one with Trifon Blue and then loaded into the opening between the glass cover slip and the cell counter itself. Please make sure that both glass cell counter and glass cover slip are clean before and after the use. Alternatively, one can substitute the traditional glass hemocytometer with high-precision disposable hemocytometer, which does not require tedious cleaning steps. These are one-up devices and does not require cover slip to operate. Now, you may have encountered various design geometries within the counting chambers and have wondered how they all work. Despite the geometrical differences, all cell counters work under the same principle, which takes cell counts at precisely defined nanoreader volumes. So as long as we know the dimension of the grid and the volume of the chamber, we can calculate the cell concentration. We will focus on Nuber, which is most commonly used for mammalian cell counting. As you can see in this image, the heavy glass cover slip used for the hemocytometer creates ceiling with height between the counting chamber and the bottom of the cover slip. This height will come out to be exactly 0.1 millimeter. In case of high precision disposable hemocytometers, chamber itself is already assembled with a ceiling on top to produce 0.1 millimeter sample depth. Since we now know the height of the counting chamber, we can now calculate the volume. For example, let's focus on the center chamber that is highlighted. It consists of 25 squares with total surface area of one millimeter by one millimeter. Now, if we factor in the height of 0.1 millimeter, we can calculate the volume of the space. It will be one square millimeter multiplied by 0.1 millimeter, which will be 100 nanoliters. Since we know the exact volume we're working with, it is just a matter of counting cells to obtain cell concentration. Let's take a closer look. In this example, we'll use the same center chamber for the cell counting after loading cells that were mixed one-to-one -one with Trifon Blue. Since Trifon Blue will stain dead cells with dark blue color, we have very convenient way of distinguishing dead versus live cells. First, let's cover some basics when it comes to counting cells in consistent fashion. We do this by ensuring that the cells on the edges are either included or excluded based on the side of the square. In this example, we'll only count the cells if they are on the left and the upper edges of the square. Now we'll count the live and dead cells. In this example, we have 20 live cells. And based on Trifon Blue staining, we have three dead cells. Next, we'll take these numbers and convert them to the concentration. As mentioned before, cells in this counting chamber are in 100 nanoliter of total volume. First, we'll take the cell count of 20 and multiply that by the dilution factor, which is two in this case, since we simply diluted cells with the equal volume of Trifon Blue. That means we have 40 live cells in 100 nanoliters, which means 400,000 cells in one milliliter or 0.4 million cells per milliliter. Another way is to simply multiply the cell number by 10,000 to get to the concentration of millions of cells per milliliter. To get more representative counts, simply repeat these processes to other squares on the hemocytometer and take the average. 
Finally, since we now have the both live and dead cell counts, we can calculate the percent viability, which will be percentage of 20 live cells divided by the total cell number of 23. In this example, this will come out to be 87%. Now you have it. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please leave your comments below.